everyone. Good morning. Welcome once again to this masterclass series. My name is Vicky and I'm from Nursery Management. Today, I'm going to cover a topic on growing means and basil. Things like how you're going to grow them, how you're going to maintain them. Also, I'm also to uh, going to cover some of the common issues that gardeners tend to face while maintaining them. Now, as with all other masterclass series, at the end of the masterclass, all right, there will be a short Q&A session. So, if you would like to ask questions, do upvote and we'll try our best to answer you. All right? Okay, now on my left here are some collections of basil and on my right here are some collections of the mints. Now, I got a question first. Someone actually asked me, um, do you mean that mint and basil got difference? Ah? Uh, you mean bean is actually not a common mint or basil? I, my, question, my answer to them is, <laughs> no, absolutely not. Both of them are actually totally different. All right, apart from the fact that both basil and mint belongs to the same family known as Lamiaceae, and they are always used in cuisines because they are well known to enhance the flavor of the dishes. All right? They actually have nothing in common, be it the smell, be it the taste, and even morphological appearance, as you can see here, all right, is also different. You know, basil are more upright, whereas mint tend to have some runners at the end of the day. All right? But of course, the biggest giveaway is the smell. Okay? Now, um, well, all the collections here that I'm showcasing are actually available in our local nurseries and hobbies too although some of them might be seasonal. That means you don't see them often. But if also, that's why you guys need to go down to nurseries often and you know, you keep an eye for any interesting ones. All right. Okay, now, hmm, let me start off with the base surface. Okay. Now, I have some collections here. First one is the variegated base known as Pesto Perpetual Basil, okay? It has very nice variegated creamy leaves, all right? And when you taste it, it has a hint of lemon. And as the name suggests, okay, Pesto Perpetual, yeah. It is always used in pesto sauce making, all right? And also, you can actually use this means also to make things like meat stew stew. Hey, hey, nice, right? Oh, one more thing. This cultivar would never have any flowers at all. It will never set any flowers. Amazing, right? So for us who actually likes to grow basil, we always like to prune away the flowers. This one, no need, okay? It's a very nice petite flower, uh, plant. Don't you think so? Okay. Now, next one I'm going to show you guys is, ta-da, purple ruffles basil. Now, as the name suggests, purple. So the whole plant itself is actually purple, purplish, in fact. Okay. And among my basil collection, this purple ruffles basil tend to taste a bit mild. Okay. Mild basil taste. So mild that when you use this for salad or salad, you know, dressing, you don't even notice the presence of basil at all. So. For those who actually do not like too, empowered, too strong um, taste in your salad, this could be your best candidate. And what's more, it can actually grow indoor. Eh? Not bad, oh? Yeah. Okay. So the other one that I'm going to show you guys is... Ta-da! Wow, you see so tall. Yes, this is the tree basil. So as the name suggests, see so tall, can cover me already. Okay, as the name suggests, it can grow up to one to three meter if given a chance. So this is actually a lesser known cultivar. You hardly see them popularly grown around, but it's actually a very useful plant. Why? 
the leaf is actually when crushed, all right, oh, smells clove. And so you can actually use the leaves to enhance your dishes such as curry, for instance. All right, so oh, it's very therapeutic. Okay, then the other one is actually out of my collection, my favorite, and that is this one, the green pepper basil. Now, this green pepper basil is a bit bizarre. It's basil, but it never and wouldn't taste like basil at all. What does it taste? I, I think you know already the answer from the common name, right? Yes, it really tastes like pepper, chili, in fact. Okay, this is not your conventional basil taste. And, but this is not, this is besides the point why I like this plant, okay? Why I like this one is that it is very hardy. It's a perennial, all right? Unlike the rest of the basil, which is actually what I would call them long-term annual, okay? They won't die so fast when, you know, developing flowers and seeds and all that, all right? But they will still die eventually. But this one is perennial, all right? It will grow and grow and grow and grow, okay? Until you neglect them. And it is pest-free, all right? No, simply no pest like to attack it, probably because it tastes pepper and pests don't like pepper. And it is very free flowering, as you can see over here. All right, so free flowering that it attracts pollinators. Now, for those of us who actually love to grow besides, you know, basils and mints, I'm sure you also like to grow, um, you know, things, all the fruited vegetables. Now, having this one is actually an advantage because it attracts bees, and with bees, it helps to pollinate your fruited vegetables, remember? Things like cucumber, uh, brinjal, ladyfingers, etc., etc. Right. Now you know why I like this one already. Huh? Okay. Now these are those mentioned before that is actually some of the uncommon ones. Now let me show you some of the common ones then. First off is the sweet basil. As the name suggests, it's sweet. It's really sweet. Okay and it's characterized by fat, juicy leaves. See? So crunchy and juicy and yeah, you can't wait to eat them. So I will use this for salad or salad dressing. But before this class, in fact, yesterday, I just realized I made a discovery. I can actually use these leaves to marinate my fish. Wow, my fish tastes so nice after that. Hmm. Can't wait to get this home. Right, next one is the lime basil over here. Now, lime basil um, has a tinge of lime, all right, and uh, or lemon if you want to. And uh, for me, I actually harvest the leaves to use as to make a, into a refreshing tea. It's actually very nice, you know. You can try it at home. Okay, it's also free flowering too, which I'm going to describe more about this plant later on. Now the other one, which when I mention this, I'm sure you all will already, and that is holy basil, presenting the holy plants. Okay, this there are two versions here um, in our local nurseries, the red ones and the green ones. Now, both of them are holy basil, and locally also call them, the locals actually call them uh, 2C. Uh, most of the time, these plants are used for religious purpose, okay, but there's another use that you can make use of. I will tell you later, okay? Just keep an eye on this. Okay, the last one is actually the Thai basil. Ah, this one very common, right? I'm sure you all seen it everywhere, right? Yes, and Thai basil is, um, I would say, a herb that you can't do without in the cuisine, in making dishes things like Vietnamese spring roll. But the reason why it's called Thai basil is not because it originates from Thailand. It's because it is a popular plant in Thailand that that's why they call it Thai basil. Okay, things like green curry, red curry, tom yam. Yeah, you go down to any of the street along Thai Thailand, you will see this being you know, used popularly. And for those out there, who actually love Taiwanese food, if I mention this, you will say already, okay? Three cup chicken, 
Sanpeiji. Ah, okay. So that one is also another dish that cannot do without Thai basil. All right. Okay. So now, as with all other classes, no, actually, all the classes like, normally have quiz, right? So this one also no difference. I'm going to give you guys some quizzes. Oh, too bad. <laughs> now, don't worry. I will promise that they will be super easy. Okay, the first one is, which of the following basil tastes like pepper? Is it A, Thai basil, or B, lime basil, or C, green pepper basil? Now, you guys have 20 seconds to, you know, to answer and start now. Okay, and the result is all. Three percent answer Thai basil, one percent answer lime basil. And 96% answer green pepper basil. Congratulations, the correct answer is green pepper basil. Wow, thank you. You guys really pay attention to me. <laughs> okay, now um, I will describe next is the mean collections. Now over here, I purposely chose some of the fruity ones, okay, except for one. All right, the first one, um, again, from the uncommon ones to the common ones, we have the pineapple mint, all right. Now, pineapple mint is characterized by the variegated creamy white margin on the leaf, if you can see those, all right. Now, if you ask me, uh, Ikea, does it taste like pineapple? Mm, answer is nope. Does it look like pineapple? <laughs> what do you think? Does it look like pineapple? <laughs> okay, the answer is no too. So if you ask me, then why is it called pineapple mint? Uh? I also don't know. <laughs> okay, well, this is actually the variegated version of the apple mint. Okay, now if you guys would research on why is it called pineapple mint, I will welcome you guys to tell me. But between this apple mint and the pineapple mint, they are actually the same. They say they taste the same also, very fruity, except that pineapple mint taste or and smells um, highly more aromatic, all right, as compared to this one. But both of them is my favorite because I always like to use them to make into a tea infusion or apple mint vanilla ice cream. Nice. Okay, the next one I have is banana mint. Nope, it doesn't taste like, I'm sorry, it doesn't look like banana. But uh, this time around, it tastes really like banana. So again, another fruity mint choice for you to make into tea or ice cream addition. Okay, next one I have is another one which is actually my favorite among the fruity ones. Okay, this is the strawberry mint. Okay, it doesn't look like strawberry, but it tastes and smells like strawberry. And it's very, it has all the, you know, petite, small leaves. So this is one look, you know that it is strawberry already, okay? In fact, the whole plant itself can be used, all right, as tea or other things. Flowers or the leaves itself, even the young stems, slen, uh, tender stems, the uh, stems, yeah, you can use them. It will not go to waste. Really nice. Okay, next off is, remember I mentioned something that is odd? Odd one. Yeah, this one is the mojit, sorry, the eudicolomine. Oops, I jumped the gun. All right, okay, this is a eudicolomine from the word eudicolom perfume. Now, the reason why I say why is this one odd one? Because, okay, it's still edible in a way. It's just that when you brew them in tea, it's the same as drinking perfume, okay? In fact, the original U de Cologne perfume originate from this mint. Although right now, they actually use more of the synthetic compounds rather than this mint. But hey, this one got a lot of users, one, you know? Yeah, I will show you later, okay? 
Now, the last one of the list today I have prepared for you guys is the very common, very hardy, a lot of users, mint known as mojito mint. Okay? Now, very familiar, right? You always seen this popularly sold in the nurseries. Okay? It is over here. If you ask me, apart from the UD colon, this is the most, um, I would say, strongest fruity mean series. All right? You see, I don't even have to touch it. I can smell it right now. Okay. A lot of users want, you know. Besides making tea, there are other things like vanilla ice cream. I keep on saying vanilla ice cream because it's always the one that will enhance the flavor rather than other flavored ones. But there's another use, okay, which I'm going to share with you later on. Now, remember just now I mentioned, right, basil and mint, different, totally different. They can never be the same, all right? But what if, what if, huh? I marry the basil and the mint together, what will happen? Dun, 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 dun. Okay, this one doesn't look very, com very special, right? Yeah, but <laughs> wait for me. This is a very bizarre basil mint. It's a combination of basil and mint, okay? And this is a mint, basically. But when you taste it, oh, this is actually basil. It's not any minty taste that you have ever tasted. And what's more, besides the U, uh, the UD colon and the mojito mint, which is very easy to uh, grow, this is another hardy one and, hard, and very easy to grow indoor and semi-shade condition. All right. <sighs> mint smell, but basal um, taste. Now, if you ask me, how does this plant end up become a basal mint? How, what is the love story like? Uh, I would not know this too. The only wild guess I can is that bees, being the main pollinators, pollinate the flowers, transfer the pollen from basil to mint, maybe. It's just a bit, maybe. All right. Hey, what's your little story? Yeah? Let them go and tell you. Okay. Now, another quiz for you guys. Okay. Now, which of the following means can revert to back to green ones, the green leaves. Is it A, apple mint, B, pineapple mint, and or C, mojito mint? Now you guys have 20 seconds to answer that, and the time starts now. Okay, time's up. Let's see the results. Ha ha ha. Yeah, you guys never pay attention to me. All right. Now the pineapple mean I mentioned. Actually, I did not mention. Ha ha ha. It's just to actually test your knowledge. Yeah, for those who out there who actually the 32% of you guys who actually uh, answered pineapple mean, you are absolutely correct. But of course, those who answer apple mint and mojito mint, no worries, because I never mentioned that. Uh, so now is the answer. Okay, you are right. The variegated pineapple mint is the one which can easily revert back to green ones to become the apple mint. Okay, wow, you are clever. Okay, because of Singapore hot, humid climate, pineapple mint's uh, variegation is actually not stable. So that is why most of the time it can actually revert to its green form, which is the apple mint. All right. But if you really have or encounter such um, happening, don't worry. All you need to do is just snip off the green parts and then you will still have your pineapple mint left. Now, the green ones, if, you, if it's long enough, don't waste it. All right. Let's try for zero waste. You can always propagate them. How are you going to do propagation? Stay tuned and find out. Okay, now, enough of the collections of the means ready. So, besides cuisines, I'm sure there are other users, right? Cannot be every time used for cooking, 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 right? That would be boring. Now, I got some, um, some users for them to share. 
in this webinar. Okay, first off, now I will start off with mean this time around. The first one on my list is the, the, the U decolo mean. Now the U decolo mean, all right, can, you know, when you do, you know, this, this is very overgrown already, in fact. Okay, so when you prune then, why not? All right, don't throw away the leaves. Why not? Just make them into potpourri. Dry them up, and it looks like this. And, oh, smells cool. All right, but because this is natural, you can store them, use them, and the flavor will still be retained for at least about two, three days. And then after that, you've got to change another bag. But with this, you can put them in your cupboard, in your, say, um, drawers, or even car. All right, it makes a very nice natural fragrance. Now, there's another thing which I tried. You guys iron clothes, right? Yeah. So, you know, ironing clothes, actually, you all need to use water, right? Why not immerse some of the leaves inside and then become spray for your ironing of clothes? I tell you, your clothes will smell refreshing you, the cologne smell. All right, of course, it lasts only a couple of hours. Ah. Not only that, you can actually just spray it as a natural air freshener. Smells good. Okay, you can try. Okay, very simple um, uses for this one, UD cologne. Okay, now enough. With, this is actually non edible use. Now, the other two will be something related to food, makan. First one I'm going to introduce you is the healthy dessert. Presenting my unsweetened natural Greek yogurt. Now, actually, before this class, I don't really like, you know, this kind of unsweetened yogurt one. I always prefer the um, strawberry, sorry, vanilla flavored one or the honey flavored one. But after this, I realized that, hey, this is very nice. Why not use this one mixed with a few berries that you can get from the supermarket. Okay, just pour it inside. But hey, where's the mint component? Wait, all you need to do, you have, uh, let's say, a kitchen. Now it's a kitchen garden, okay? Um, out of those fruity mints which I mentioned, like banana mint, apple mint, um, strawberry mint, you can use any of these fruity mints to add as your yogurt addition. For now, I think I will try strawberry. Okay, all you need to do is just, um, you know, harvest a bit. Where? Let me sanitize my hand first. Make sure it's clean. Okay, and just don't worry, before that, I already washed the leaves. You guys don't know me. Okay, even the stem can also use if you want to. And you will have a strawberry mint flavored mixed berry grape yogurt. Sounds very nice. Never mind, I'll reserve it at the end of this webinar. <laughs> okay, so this is yogurt. Okay, you guys can go back and try. I'm sure the kids will actually love it too. Now, the other one that I'm going to have is actually a low calorie drink using mojito means presenting my, thank you, crushed ice. You need crushed ice, okay? But on top of that, okay, what else you need? Mm, you can actually, of course, the main star, which is the mojito mean, okay? You can actually harvest about five to eight leaves or more if you want to, depending on how strong you want, all right? Crush them uh, slightly, put it inside. Next, you can actually use a, a sweetener in a way, natural one, which is known as candy leaf, all right, which is shown there, all right? Or it's optional. So if you do not want to use, it's fine too. For me, I don't need that. Okay, next off is either a soda water 
or you can use things like elderflower cordial to add into a non-alcoholic mojito drink. Sparkling soda mojito drink and add with a tinge of lemon or lime in this case. Give it a bit of sour. Cheers! Wow, super refreshing! Do I make you guys watering already? All right. Okay, so you guys can do it. Now this is, a, I repeat, a non-alcoholic mojito drink, okay? So you guys can actually go back and do it. Very easy, right? Okay, now enough of the mints already. Let's go on to basil. Now basil, um, you can use any of the basil leaves, all right? Dry it and you can actually put a topping for any pizzas. Or you know that actually one, some of the Basil can actually be used to make into tea. For instance, um, the lesser known holy basil, okay, any color, um, I just happened to grab the red ones. You can grab the green ones too. All right, you can try to harvest the leaves. Either use it fresh or you can dry them for about a day or two in the hot sun. All right, it will look like this. make them into tea. This will actually help us to soothe um, problems like stomach discomfort or even um, you know, soothing your throat as well. Mix off, you just, all you have to do is some hot water. Now, something to note, okay? The water that I use here is not boiling water. Okay, which is something which you need to be mindful of when you are actually using fresh leaves. That's because, especially not um, water that actually is a uh, you know um, boiling water temperature. What you should actually use is actually around eighty to ninety degree um, Celsius temperature wa uh, water. Okay, not boiling one, huh? Because especially when we use uh, fresh leaves, that's because the hot boiling water will actually damage any natural properties, beneficial ones in fact, uh, during the infusion part. So it is actually not recommended. So the best one is still between 80 to 90 so that you can enjoy the full benefits of this natural um, plants that they actually provided. Okay. Now, the other thing is when you grow basils, they will have flowers and when you have flowers you have seeds right so okay you all know how to harvest seeds right that means to wait for the mature flowers then you just harvest the seeds okay if you don't know then you can actually refer to our mpart sg youtube channel to take a look at that okay now basil seeds all right is you know this is the dish whereby you commonly seen in hawker center okay this is what I call the ai yu or ice jelly. Okay, this one looks like well, what, what, what is that brown thing, little thing like looks like depo? Uh? That is actually what we call salase. Okay, salase basil seeds. All right, so you all you have to do is just soak them and then just pour and you can actually enhance the taste of this. This one is very, very common in Hawker Center. Now, Enough of all the introduction of the users already. I'm sure you will be dying to ask me, how do I actually maintain all these plants? How do I actually ensure that they do not die? All right. Well, I'm going to take this opportunity to share with you some of the tips and stick to this formula. Okay. The first formula starts is with S, which is soil. All right. I always tell my classes that Soil is the basic foundation to ensure that your plants are living happily ever after. Why? Because most of the time, the roots 
are actually living or buried inside the soil. So if you do not take good care of them, then that's why the plants will start to give you trouble. In fact, most of the time when we buy a plant from the nursery, uh, not that I say that the, the mix is actually not good, it's just that under Singapore hot, humid climate, which is keep on raining and raining, like right now it's also raining, okay? Then as time passes, you will have problems. The water does not drain, and then you have problems like this photo that I have prepared for you guys, okay? It looks waterlogged, it doesn't look very healthy. You can actually observe there's a tinge of algae on the surface, all right? Then this one, um, eventually the plants will die because the roots doesn't get enough aeration. Okay, so what should you do then? Is it the end of the day? Of course not. All right, just I have something to introduce you guys, which is known as a mean basal mix. Well-drained, fertile, mean mixture, okay? And how well-drained is that? Let me show you. Okay, over here, what I have here, okay, let me put away my drinks first. is what I call the mean basal mix, okay? First off is LECA, which stands for LECA, which stands for lightweight expanded clay aggregates. Now in the market, there is um, diameter size ranging from 2 mm to 10 mm. For here, I actually choose a 4 mm one, all right? So it's mid range, so you don't get the water to drain too fast nor too slow, all right? So 4 mm. Leica Boss. Next off is peat moss. Okay, peat moss is actually um, one of the soil amendment that helps to actually uh, provide nutrients needed for the plants and also retain the needed moisture that it needs. Next, you can have either the golden brown spongy looking thing that's called vermiculite or you can choose the volcanic glass looking white colored balls known as perlite. Now, you use either one of them, it's fine, okay? One or this one, both is okay, all right? And the other optional one which I would like to add in on, but of course it's option, so you guys can choose, don't need to add, and that is charcoal. The one that we use for barbecue, yeah, that's the one, except that this round, I have crushed them into smaller pieces. Can you see the smaller pieces? Yes, it's not the big, big chunk. Okay, so you can hammer them and make it into small pieces. Now, notice that I actually contain them in equal size of pots. So, if you ask me how much to add for each portion, I will say equal size. Okay, one is to one, is to one, is to one. Okay, so what should we do next? Okay. Is playing masak masak time. What we need to do is pour everything here, pour everything here. Now, a word of caution when we are dealing with vermiculite or perlite, all right, it is actually quite dusty. So it's good either to wear a mask or you need to, you know, wet the thing before it's totally, you know, too dusty for us. and then chocolate chips. Okay, I will reserve one pot first for use later. What you need to do is wear a glove. One hand will do. It depends on whether you are left-handed or right-handed, it doesn't matter. Okay, with the spade, you need to mix them well. That's why I say playing masa masa, right? Yes. Make sure that the whole mixture is well mixed and remove any clumps that you can see. So ultimately, it should look like this. Okay, this is what I call a mean basal mix. 
Okay, the key thing is make it as gritty as possible. All right, guys. Okay, I'll reserve this for use later on. Okay. Ta-da, I'm back. Okay. So this is the soil part. Now the next one is another S, which is sunlight. Now both of these plants actually prefers four hours at least minimum of sunlight. Okay. Now for basil, it will be more easier, more straightforward, direct exposure of sunlight. For mint, well, they require a kind of filtered sunlight. Okay. Um, things like having the plants along the windowsill. Or you can construct some of the you know transparent using transparent sheet to make into um, structure to protect this means away from the weathers of elements. Okay, that is also fine too. Now, for more information on how to construct such structure, do look up on our MPAX SG YouTube channel. Okay, do give us some support because one of my colleagues actually um, has painstakingly made that video for all to to observe and you know see. Alright, so sunlight is actually very important. Enough. The next one is W, water. Now, both of these plants, depending on the, the day, whether it's hot or it's actually um, windy, okay, they only require once, at least minimum once a day. And I will actually advise you guys to water during the morning, early morning. Okay, not midday when it's too hot, neither is it at night when uh, there is not enough evaporation and you have a lot of water being trapped on the leaf itself and you will actually give rise to um, fungal problems with it. Don't later come back and say, Vicky, Vicky, how come my leaves all spot, spot and yellow, yellow one? Ah? Hmm. You know already, oh, that's because of fungal problems. Okay, always concentrate your watering at the base of the plant. All right and not bathe the entire plant with water. Okay, and you will do just fine. Okay, now next one is pruning. Assuming that you actually cover and manage the soil, sunlight and water very well, I'm sure now the plant is actually growing happily ever after. Now like all human beings, we also need to have hair cut. Plants also need to cut. So it's good to use a pair of secateurs, all right, to clean ones, in fact, to prune away, all right, any um, flowering buds, all right, to encourage, or the shoots, to encourage new growth. And also to ensure that the plant is more compact and bushy, rather than too laggy, okay? Now, as you prune the leaves, you will actually come to notice that you have some smells emitted. It's actually quite therapeutic, you know? That is why I actually enjoy my session during the pruning because I can smell the mint and the basil smell. Okay, now you might ask me, do I need to prune away the flowers? Now, it depends on whether you would require the plant to be used for your you know, cutlery users or you just want to use this for, say, retain the flowers for attracting pollinators or also to, um, to develop the seeds so that you can collect the seeds for making salase, dessert maybe? Well, it all depends on you. Just know that, okay, if you do not prune away the flowers, right, the whole plants will become very yellowish, like this one here, okay? Then, very nice flowers, except the leaves, if you notice, is actually yellowish as compared to this one, which I have pruned two weeks ago, okay? It's actually the same plant, same condition, all right? So do be mindful. So if you actually want to keep the flowers only for seeds later, by all means, all right? If not, prune away, let them have um, energy safe because with more flowers means more energy being wasted and your taste if you want to use it, the leaves would actually taste lousy, right? Then, my practice is every after pruning, you will require to do a round of fertilizer, okay? This is to boost them up. So in the market, you actually have both organic as well as the synthetic 
fertilizers. Okay, this is the synthetic one that you see very popularly. The color will depend on what it contains, or this one, which is the bone meal, which is organic. All right. Since both of these, if you're not interested in ensuring there is flowers, then I will actually advise you to use fertilizer that is of high nitrogen content rather than high phosphorus and potassium, okay? So that not many flowers are being developed, all right? And with every fertilizer, please water every time. And how much to apply? Well, you can follow the label instruction but my general rule of thumb to you guys is to apply more often at a small portion. Like for example, one tablespoon, depending on the size of the pot. Okay? Clear? Right. Now comes the third questions of the day. Okay, now, when harvesting for the leaves, it would be good to harvest the bigger leaves at the bottom and leave the young shoots alone. Now, true or false? You guys have 20 seconds to answer that. And the time starts now. Okay, time's up. Now let's see the answer. Ha ha ha. Fifty-three percent of you answer is true. Okay, you should actually harvest the leaves, the big ones, and leave the young shoots. Forty-seven actually answered false. And the correct answer is the forty-seven percent of you. Yay. Fifty-three of you guys, let me tell you why it is false. Okay. You should actually leave the bigger leaves at the bottom alone. Why? Because bigger leaves, more surface for use for photosynthesis. So plants will actually need all those big leaves for photosynthesis to make more plant food. And at the same time, you don't believe me, you can go back and try. Big leaves taste lousy. Younger shoots actually taste nicer. And this is actually reflected when we come across pest attack. Okay, now I hope that will actually answer why is it that it is not correct to actually cover the big ones. Okay, so remember this, all right, guys? Always only harvest the young shoots. Don't harvest the big ones. Okay, now as we journey along, you know, maintaining all these plants, basal means, okay, we, def in, in fact, other plants as well, besides this one, we will definitely encounter certain signs and symptoms, certain plant language that the plant is trying to tell you, I'm sick already. Blah. Help me, save me before I die. How? Okay. All right. The first thing that comes to your mind is, yes, it's actually best problem, okay? The mean, oh sorry, the plants actually get attacked by pests and then they are trying to tell you exactly what's wrong with them. Okay, so I over here I have um, shortlisted three kinds of common pests that you will always face. Okay, um, when maintaining the plants, right? First one is ethics. Okay, notice the ethics looks very mm, yucky. Okay. Next one is lace bugs. Right? Lace bugs look like this on the underside of the leaves. They are called lace bugs because uh, under microscopic power, you can already see that the wings of the lace bugs actually are lacy. Okay? That is why their name is called lace bugs. But even though the name is beautiful, it is not our friend. It's a pest. Pesky pest. And the third one is actually the white flies. All right? These are characterized by the whole body, all white ones, all right, and they fly around. So what happened? These are the symptoms. So what's the signs? All right. So you can see that some of the, plant, the photos that I have prepared, all right, notice that the first two photos actually shows how the plant react when they are under a fixed attack. And then the next one is actually um, early stage of a lace bug attack. 
So you notice that the leaf becomes a bit skeleton. Right? So if you actually leave those lace buds alone, you're not vigilant enough, all right, the whole plant will actually become skeleton, literally. And also notice that the pest tends to attack which part of the plant? The young part or the old part? The young shoots, right? So see, even the pest also know where to choose. Now you know, right? Young shoot, better, juicier, sweeter. <laughs> okay, so now you might ask me, how do I solve them then? <laughs> well, you can use a pair of clean psychotheria or cutter. Okay, make sure that if you have a lot of plants, make sure that you remember to sanitize with each pruning, all right, to prevent the pest from jumping from another plant during your pruning session. Prune away the new shoots and uh, observe. Um, if you want spraying, all right, but uh, since we are eating them, right, it's best to use um, environment-friendly, human-friendly chemicals. So some of the chemicals that I would suggest is, first thing, is neem oil or white summer oil. Now, when using this kind of petroleum-based oil, do be careful not to spray them during midday, okay, because it's hot, and oil on the surface of the leaves will cause leaf scorch. So that's why sometimes after burning, you might notice that your leaf become more stressed and got a bit chow da. Okay? Now, remember just now earlier on, I mentioned that you should concentrate watering at the base of the plants. Ah, now, this is the time now. This is the time to spray the entire plants with the chemicals. Okay? This is to ensure that any presence of aids of the pests are eradicated. Now, besides the petroleum base, you can actually use things like plant-based extract. For instance, pyrethrin, which is extracted from chrysanthemum, or biometrin. All right, this is actually um, extracted from this plant called sulfora flavescens. Okay, so when we use plant-based extract, um, extract chemicals, now do be careful that when you water, don't you know water normally because water will break down all this very easily. That goes with the raining part. So if it rain and after you spray, sorry, you guys got to start all over again in order to ensure that the pests are eradicated. Right? Now we come to the favorite segment, the Q&A session. Now, you guys got any questions? Do upvote them, okay? And I will try to answer them as much as I can. Now, meanwhile, while you guys are actually upvoting and asking, asking questions, I have two common questions that I prepared, which I have some gardeners tend to ask me. Now, the first one is, can I plant both basil and mint within one planter? Now, will my basil taste like mint and my mint taste like basil? <laughs> okay, now, to answer the last one first, okay, apart from the married plant, Okay, a basil will never taste like a mint and a mint will never taste like a basil when you plant two different kinds of plants together in a planter. There's no way unless it's again pollinated and you get a new cultivar. If you do, congratulations. Now, as to a question of whether or not you can plant both of them within a planter, I would say regardless of the size, unless you actually, instead of planter, you want to plant them on true ground, fine. Flower bed is okay. All right. If not, planter is small. And mint and basil have different growth rate. Not only that, even among the mint themselves and among the basil themselves have their different growth rate too. So eventually, if you like to grow all the mint collection together, let's say you like all of them, you plant one planter, eventually, right, you won't be able to spot any of them. Because some of them, like for example, you decolumin are more aggressive. Then what happened? You cannot find the rest of the small, small mean ready law. That's it. You lost. Okay, so I would say don't be so ambitious. Just plant one type per planter. You still can enjoy unless you are planting them in a flower bed. All right? Now, the next question. I have been growing basil plant for a long time, but it looks straggly and yellowish after some time. So how do I solve this problem? I have the exact plan to show you guys what I mean. 
Okay? Notice this one. This is the normal Thai basil. Notice how straggly it is. And then you have yellowish leaves here and there, and a lot of flowers. Well, especially this part. Okay? I would say that this one is already. But you still have time to actually prune away the shoots and do propagation. Okay? Now, how do you actually do a correct propagation? You can actually prune off the stem. For instance, I will prune one of the mean first. Okay? Then you have two ways. You can actually remove them, the leaves, bottom. Okay? And remove whatever leaves. Cut the leaves into half. This is to reduce transpiration. Okay? And normally when we do direct cutting for propagation, you can actually dip them into what I call this a rooting hormone. Dip them inside. And remember just now I show you guys how to make the mint basil mix? This is where it comes into useful. With any of the wooden chopsticks, all you need to do is just poke here. All right. And then you just put this. And you can plant this. Simple. Or you can actually have another way of uh, doing propagation, and that is just by dipping them into water. All right. And this one, I actually um, cut them and dip inside the water for. Um, for the past one and a half week, and you see how vigorous the roots is now. Can you see that? So you can actually use this to propagate and directly into just now the mix. Okay, both ways are fine. It's just whether you like to see the, the roots growing in the water and you will feel safe, got that sense of security. But do be mindful to change the water uh, every two days to prevent mosquito breeding. All right. So I hope that I have answered your question. But what happened to the remaining plant? I'm sorry, I got to say that you have to throw them away. Because already. A bit wrong. But the plant is spent, I would say. Okay, so you still can save them. Alright, so let's see what other questions that you guys have. Now what happens if I don't remove the flowers from my Thai basil? Does it change the taste? Now earlier on, I say yes. If you actually allow the flowers to be developed on the plant itself, all right, it saps away the energy. So your whole plant, the energy will not be the same as when you are not having any flowers. Okay, the taste will be definitely affected. So if you want to use that plant for cooking, I would advise don't have any flowers at all. Okay, I hope I answer you this question. Now, if the means get root bound, what will happen? Then you can just change a new pot. All right, that's very easy. You can, when it root bound, you will be able to see that it start to bulge, or there's a lot of roots underneath. Okay, which I don't have here to show. So it's time to change the pot. All you have to do is just remove them, and then change into a mix just now, and they will be very happy already. Okay, so I hope I answer this question. Next. Is it true that basils grow from seeds are more hardy as compared to those grown for cuttings? Um, I would say, yeah, in a way, basils that grow from seeds are actually much better, they are stronger. Uh, although the rate wise seeds, it will be taken a longer time to, to, to be grown, to germinate, all right? So, uh, apart from the cuttings, but if you want it to have fast action, you can use the cuttings. But I would say you can use the seeds, no problem. Just that the cuttings eventually, because it's from the same mother, eventually your genetics will be affected. Not that basil will actually have any problems, it's just that you will slowly notice that those propagators from cutting will start to tend to get um, a bit funny, straggly looking, and you know, tend to get pest attack easily. Okay? Now, next one. How do I remove the mean runners for propagation? Hey, I have this one here. You notice that here you have some of the root runners. These are what I call basal runners. Okay? Uh, sorry, uh, mint runners. 
Oops. Okay. Right. All you have to do again, just trim any one of them, and you can just poke the same thing like what I did. Either that, or you can just blunt them into the water by removing the basal, the lower leaves, and then you can just put inside. Finish. Easy. Runners can also be used for propagation, by the way. Okay, now, next one. What should we look out for to see if a plant needs to be reported? Two things. One, you see whether underneath the roots will come out from the drainage holes. That is one sign. Second, sometimes your plants will look a bit, all of a sudden, like yellowish, and uh, you notice that Hey, I actually water there. How is it that it turns yellow, especially the lower part? Now, that is probably a sign of the fact that it needs to be reported. So, these are a couple of signs that you can look out for when deciding when to report. I hope I answer you this question. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Next one. Can I put crush? Eight shells on the soil of my basil or ming plant. Yeah, sure. Yeah, especially if you okay. Crush eight shells uh, is a form of I will call them soil amendment. Something that you can actually improve the soil condition. Uh, one thing is when you do crush eight shells, don't put so much. Okay, of course moderation is always the best. And eight shells, I would say, is a source of calcium for the nutrients for the plants. So that is not an issue. And yes, you can, but a word of advice is to always mix the eggshells into the soil rather than putting on the surface, okay? So that they can actually really release out the nutrients and it gets decomposed easily, okay? Now the next one, which is the last question. Now what causes mean leaves to suddenly turn brown, crisp, and die. I um, mean same like basil, that once they flower, the stems will turn woody and die. Okay, let me answer the later part first. Means and basils, I would say they are roughly the same, yes. But, okay, let's talk about basil first, okay? When you allow the basils to actually um, develop flowers and you never prune them, as I say, energy will be set. And then eventually, you'll notice that some of the base will start to become old. Okay? Right? So, can I have the other question before that? I cannot see. Yeah. So, eventually, <laughs> okay, the stems will eventually turn OD. But remember, no matter what, all the bases are considered as long-term annuals. Same thing goes for the basil. All right, eventually, no matter how, they will still become old and like this, okay, woody and die. As to why the mean suddenly turn brown, crease and die will depends on what have you been doing so far. Look back, what kind of history has you been doing? Suddenly turn brown got certain issues. For example, did you do some spraying? And when you do spraying, is the solution become too strong that they have shock? All right, that's one. Second thing is, do you remember to water the plants? Do you remember to water deeply? That means deep watering, rather than just superficial spraying. That's it. Okay, so this is the difference. So when your plants don't get enough water, they might suddenly turn brown and die. Now, of course, you might suspect whether there is a pest problem, but when, if that's the case, you always need to look out whether there's any frost, which is the pest will always you know, excrete, so the excretion. If there is no frost signs, chances are pest problem is actually very low. Okay, I hope that this is the answer. And now, I will say that thank you. This is the last one, so um, thank you guys for attending this webinar. I really hope this session is useful, fruitful, informative for you guys, and also boost up your confidence in growing the means and basil, which most of the gardeners came back to me 
to say that they are very hard to maintain. I hope that this one will actually tell you, actually, it's quite simple if you remember to keep to the formula. All right, so today's session will be uploaded into MPAC's SG YouTube channel tomorrow. And if you require other resources, um, like you know all the how to do plottings and all that, do look up with our MPAC's website. They have a very, a very informative uh, information. Okay, so I wish you guys all a happy weekend. Goodbye.